No, I didn't hear anything. Okay. Um, I was on a Zoom call with someone else. They initiated it. And when they hit the button, something came over my headphones that says, recording has started or something. Uh, So I don't know if that. Like it doesn't even, it does. I don't have a visual or anything. So in my top left corner of the whole thing right now, there's this thing that says recording. Nice. uh, Good. So you're probably recording. It doesn't say anything on my side. I am. I'm I'm recording. Let me go. I don't know if you're in full view or not. I mean, maybe that's it. Uh, but yeah, top left for me, full recording. There's a there's a pause button and a stop. Button oh yeah, it does on full size. Yeah, I was in I, the I was shrunk down before. I do the I try to do the narrow screen for me because then it puts you top, me bottom. And when yeah. I'm looking at you, like I'm looking in your eyes right now, I'm uh-huh. cl- more closely looking at where the camera is. Right. It, like I can't look at myself and check this. Am I looking at you? Yeah. So that, uh-huh. so my concept works. Right. <laughs> cool. you, yeah. you, know, you, you try something, then you forget to ask for feedback or you right. do and they don't understand. And then yeah. you forget about it. And you're like, well, shit, now I don't even know. <laughs> right. All that effort and thinking about it and laying up at night. Yeah. No, it's fine. Press record dummy. I hit that. Right. So my first draft of my checklist is currently working. So nice. That's that. Um, Time to laminate. Your curse, Stayron? Staring. Like you're staring at something. Yep. Chris yep. Staring. Staring at something. If yep. you don't have a logo that looks like this and then that, you're probably wrong. I don't know. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Chris Staring, and then people yeah. will get what it is. Let me see here. Used to write, direct, and produce films, corporate training through so improv comedy. That's right. Which is where we tried to where we got our thing we think we connected yeah. there for this nonprofit thing uh just to remind you of some of your quotes uh-huh. you gotta have permission to fail uh-huh. bring something with you right yes and yes and that's yeah. your improv trick i imagine uh-huh. building for boards i don't remember what that was referenced to relationships are king if you do something wrong, do it twice. Right. Yeah, I got I, all that down. <laughs> I just, uh, I think I was talking to my admiral this morning, which is a whole really cool experience. Uh, and then I brought that up to someone else who is semi-wise. I call him semi-wise. Yeah. Moments wise of, about of wiseness. Things. He's like, yeah. that's pretty funny. There you go. Why is it not semi trucks? Oh my goodness. I don't know why I'm not actually laughing, but my chest hurts right now. So <laughs> Did I give you a heart attack? Uh, like, that's so hilarious. My heart stopped. Yeah. Um, what What's the number for 911 in Bahrain? What do I call? <laughs> I don't know, but now 988 in the US is a suicide hotline. A three yeah. digit. That's uh-huh. amazing. Um, he says, I, I try to put it on my wall or try to kind of make it my own on my wall. It's like, I post something like, uh, don't avoid failure. Yeah. But avoid, the, but avoid this, but try to avoid the same failure. Right. I'm trying to make it sound wise so I can use it as a catchphrase or make people feel good or something or other. I don't know. But, right. Uh, oh, you'll figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I said I try not to avoid failure, but I try to avoid failing the same or the same failings. the same way. Yeah, the same, the same failure. Yeah, I think like the place that, like where that like fail twice thing comes in handy. It comes in handy in comedy, but it also comes in handy like if you do something boneheaded in front of your friends and you know they're going to make fun of you. If you can own it, and then like do it again, it's funny because you are now owning the laughter. You did it on purpose. You yes, know. and in the military, you had better do that. Or right. you're just going to hate life because you can't escape these people. Exactly. No, you <laughs> like, can't. No. You can't run away, change jobs, quit or whatever, or just never show up to the thing again. Right. They're there. They right. remember. You let it own you, and now they're going to own you for – So it's uh, better to be a part of the joke a than to be oh, the yeah. butt of the joke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my current – I won't call him boss. Person in a position above where Supervisor. I am. 
yeah. but it's not really in charge of me. Or whatever. The thing, the guy, he currently does something amazing that I've struggled with for a long time. And he's kind of like always just in the, in the moment, whether it's like, like he's focusing on something, there's like a comment like me, I'll have to like pause my life, my being to then process the thing. And I must always do it in like wrong, yeah. you know, not the right, not the way I want to do it. Uh, but he does, he's got like this auto laugh, like the, <laughs> and I don't know if that's his, that's my processing thing. Right. But it's like the thing doesn't affect him or right. he's got, it, it's, a, it's a reaction that I wish I could master mm-hmm. because he's so great at it. And it looks just like, everything's cool right i've discovered that i'm not casually cool yeah <laughs> i'm, I'm work not at it. i'm not i'm a little bit uh high strung a little bit tense i'm a little bit always focused and like when i focus something it's it's like this hyper focus yeah so that can anything, make you good at your job it can and, and it's wonderful for a lot of things but someone throwing kind of a casual like snide comment or trying to play with me when I'm not like in that frame. Yeah. It like, completely fucks my world up. Like I of can't, course. uh, like if, like if something was on your mind and you try uh, to go do improv, yeah. I imagine it would probably cause a, a negative reaction. It can. I mean, it depends. Our group has been together for 11 years. I've been part of them for 10. So it's right. like, they, they have a lot of dirt on me and they can give me the sickest burn, but, uh, I, I accept it from them and laugh at it because I know right. that they're being funny and that they love me. But that's uh, but the right, but you're in that right frame. So you're in that frame. You're in a safe right. space. If you came in, yeah. let's say you came in with, from some horrible thing, right. some terrible thing happened and you're like, I've really got to get going to my, you know, my comedy troupe to, yeah. to, to try to break out the funk, whatever, but you can't shake that thing you're holding on to. Yeah. And they hit you with something likely is, going to produce a, a bad reaction i don't know that, it, that thing really for me it. is all the yeah. time like if yeah if i'm in the zone and someone hits me like it's like a right. pfft, where it should be a <laughs> like right a at work, that'll happen yeah that'll happen at work if somebody gives yeah. hits me at the wrong time but like at yeah. the improv like we often will go in and tell each other all the crap that happened and then we can make fun of it or have fun with those ideas um, and that's, that's, what's really freeing about it is that you can take something that is, is really burdening you and, and find a way through it, uh, when somebody else is laughing with you. So it's right. Great. But that's like part of your, your pregame ritual. It right? is. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I, like when I go to work, I run out to walk to work in civilian clothes and I get there in the locker room to put on my uniform. Cause that's just the, the area where yep. they were in. And by the way, the podcast hasn't started yet. Just so you know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, it's kind of annoying because I don't, I use, like in Oklahoma City, I throw my flight suit in the morning, which is like wearing fucking PJs and you just be bop to work and walk in and it's whatever, right? Yeah. But what it, here, what it, it forces you to do because you kind of have to be not super vigilant, but you know, you have to be aware on the way to and from work. Sure. Heightened tensions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but forcing, you know, the, the thing that I have to go in and sit in the locker room and then put my uniform on, mm-hmm. regardless of what you call that thing, it's really a pregame ritual. Yeah. Unconsciously, I'm putting on my work boots. I've got my work t-shirt on. I've got my work mm-hmm. socks on. I've got my work camouflage pants, right? My work, mm-hmm. you know, camouflage blouse or whatever the heck you call it. Jacket, and then you've yeah. got your work boots and then you've got things on you and they say, you know, good morning, sir. And they're referring to me right. as an official title. But like the, the act of putting on the garb, the uniform, the whatever you call it, is that formal or informal pregame ritual that, that puts you in the whatever mindset. And That's then forcing nice. me to change out of that and then change into these which I says like I wonder if tacos think about me when we're apart too. Is my shirt today? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, it forces me to go. All right, I'm leaving work at work. Right. You know, so it's That's a pregame nice. and a postgame ritual, even though it's kind of annoying to me personally because you know we don't like to change our stuff up. But mm. 
but you have that kind of pregame ritual before your comedy show. You go in and you unload them and then you kind of we joke do. about it as a, as a, as a loving family unit. And then you go right. off and then you just kick the show off and you're whatever. Right. Yeah. And we have warm ups and stuff that we do in between there. So it kind of helps you separate your outside life from the stuff in there because also on stage the audience most likely does not know what's going on in your life unless you tell them so if you're yeah. trying to make inside jokes about that it's just not going to work um yeah, you know yeah. because the audience yeah. doesn't know what you're talking about um so yeah you, there, there's a certain process to being able to unload that stuff beforehand warm up it's just, it's just like yeah you're taking off your boots and stuff yeah huh yeah it's a gift yeah, it's nice good talk i like this yeah yeah. We should do this more often. By more often, I say that's a desire. And who knows if it will ever happen again. And you can schedule if I'm it ever in Bahrain, Bahrain, I'll look you up. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll be back in the States June-ish. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Um, let's see what else I got in here. You must be free to make mistakes. Right. Mm, love that. That's true. Silliness is very important. I think it is. Definitely want to talk about that today. Sure. Definitely want to mention. It's at the top of the page. Yeah. Seriously. Um, a lot of life is saying yes. I really think that is really important. Something along that line has been kind of popping up in my world, whether it's uh, someone talking to me about it or whatever. I, I kind of say something similar. I call it the importance of showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's to the meeting, to the event, to the group, to the fundraiser, to the networking event, to the work, to the gym, to the whatever, the showing up is the first ingredient to making that whatever magic. Of course it is. Yeah. I mean, like you mentioned the gym, like you, you and I know the hardest part about being at the gym is getting to the gym. Oh yeah. Once you're at the gym, you're like, well, shit, I'm at the gym. Might as well. Yeah. I may as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like it's that act of going to the gym. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Right. Right now. Full disclosure, I'm adding something to my checklist. You know what it is? What's that? Get your pen. Because my pen's over there. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And get pen and paper. I'm not going to write dummy because I don't like to talk to myself that way. But That's fine. Just a second. Yeah. This is like, did I show you my place? No, I've just seen that screen behind you. This this is a this is a mirror thing. This yeah, is a nice. mirror. But like uh, this is like the kitchen table. Oh wow, that is that is really nice. This is like the, one of the coolest places I've ever been. But this is like so this is Bahrain, so that's a marble floor. Gosh, you look like you're living in a spaceship. Like that looks so futuristic. This these curtains here, this is that's a three quarter of the edge of the building that's a giant window that whole thing is out wow. of the water but it's Dang. already it's already nighttime here but look at like uh it's that island cabinets that yeah light, the island over here and that's uh in a european style kitchen so the thing i think is on your far right the brown top and bottom that's my uh -huh. freezer fridge and freezer wow. the great thing is a plug cabinet that, that Next thing is the microwave and, and oven. And then that's a European washer dryer. Um, that is so much better than where I live. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I grew up in trailer parks and foster homes, right? right? This is the nicest place I've ever lived in, yeah. ever. Right. In the place I just left in Rhode Island because I was at that school for three months. I found a deal on an Airbnb with a guy that likes the military. I was renting an Airbnb wing of his mansion because Newport is the mansion place, right? Right. Did you know that? I've heard of it, but uh, yeah, I've never been. Make yourself a little note just to Google kind of like mansions in Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah. Just for yourself. It's like a thing, like the Newport Historical Society has all this like, I don't know if it's Rockefeller, but, but the Rockefeller house, like summer house or summer, you know, week and a half of whatever year is their summer place. Right. Like the breakers and the name your mansion, name your family. Right. The thing is in Newport. So right. this, the guy that I have stayed with is a business owner, but his quote unquote mansion was like a ghetto shit mansion compared to these. And his wing of his 
mansion was a 1,450 square feet, two bedroom, two bath apartment wow. that I got to rent for like 85 bucks a night. That's amazing. Wow. But I got to grab a bed. Yeah, definitely. I know we're kind of rambling for the first 15 minutes here. You have it's any okay, kind man. of time, time constraints? Uh, no, not, not for a couple hours. So we're good. Definitely not going to come bunch into that. I just want to make sure you're not like all of a sudden, like in some kind of hurry here. No, no. In uh, in two hours, I have a phone call I have to take, but I don't think <laughs> we could talk improv for two hours. We'll see. Let's see here. Backup host. Good reminder for me. Get a virtual assistant. Ear hustle. I think it's a podcast you recommended to me. Yes. Yeah. You. I think you would like that. The podcast movement thing in Texas in August. Yeah. Great. Event. It's a great conference. It's a great conference. I. To be honest, I. I think we we mentioned this before, but I need to get into like the podcasting world as an entity. Uh -huh. Yeah. I have a podcast, but I don't really listen to podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they have a Probably not Facebook wise. group too. Mm -hmm. They have a Facebook Ooh, group. The Facebook, the podcast movement has a Facebook group. The podcast group. movement has a Facebook group. Yeah, it's the same title. Um, and it's helpful. A lot of that, you know, the questions that come up on there are pretty basic starter stuff. But, um, you know, it's, you know, it's a way to connect. That's, no, absolutely. And then you needed some marketing help, right? Uh, yes. And I have some good ideas. I have a friend of mine who started a business uh, selling yo-yos online. He's, he does, he's been doing it for like 15 years and it's done very well. So he and I sat down and knocked out some ideas. One of the big ones he had since my show is very research heavy and it's history and it's Christian history uh, was that I should take a lot of my existing research that I already have and just write a, like a one to two page article and then use that byline to try to get people towards my podcast um, because that mm -hmm. would, uh, you know, allow me to put the articles into publications that already have my audience. Um, and, uh, and I could just recycle material I already have, which would be awesome. Absolutely. Repurposing the things that you yeah. create. So one of the thoughts mm -hmm. I haven't, I've been, I haven't had time to make this thing work yet is when I, when I thought of this, my goal was to have content, uh, choose your own content preference. Mm -hmm. So if I record in Zoom and I publish as a podcast, I could, and I'm working on, and really need to get that VA action going. Thanks for the reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone wants to digest material, they can digest it podcast, YouTube video, or mm -hmm. Facebook video. Um, have the transcripts so you could take it in text if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So that would give you three ish options mm -hmm. to, to get the media of your choosing same material. There's a, yeah. 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 There's a subscription service you might like. It's called repurpose.io. I don't know if you've yeah, heard of that. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've okay. been reluctant to pull the trigger because kind of a penny pincher. Uh, uh, it does I, cost money, but it seems it, like it might be something that would help you a lot in that. Yeah. Save some it, time. it does. I got, I've just got to figure out which path is worth both my time and which, which paid path is worth mm -hmm. juice worth the squeeze. Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't subscribe to everything. There are, there are so many different services and things. That's yeah, absolutely. There's, there's so many wonderful tools. There's so many free and I don't really have the personal bandwidth to explore everything right. in person. Yeah. Um, so I might just have to suck it up and make it happen. But yeah, yeah, I'm gonna write that down again. Repurpose. Io, and you're not the first person to suggest that. In fact, the person that's I've never the headline, used it. First person that brought up Repurpose Io also uh, keyed me into Headliner, and I haven't done either. Yeah, Headliner's pretty myself. cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you run Truth Podcast. Yeah. Big, big points. I'm going to say Staren, right? Yes. Staren. So what it's going to look like is I'm going to give a little pseudo intro and be like, hey, this is Travis Johnson with 
nonprofit architect. Support us directly at patreon.com slash nonprofit architect. I'm here today with Chris Starin. 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 Best part about recording is my editor can just say, cut take it out. Take out those pauses. Yeah. Well, take out the pauses. And if we mess up or the uh, connection gets crap, I might ask you to kind of repeat something you just said because I hear the connection problem. Yeah. Uh, and then he just goes and cleans it up because I know he's going to listen to this. Michael yeah. Blaze is rigging ridiculous. I love him. And he's a Christian. Nice. Uh, which is just, you know, icing on the cake. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go the little, the little standard intro on mm -hmm. the date with Chris Darren, uh, the voice and visionary behind true podcast, right? He's written, directed and produced, uh, two major films, motion two pictures. feature length films. Yeah. Two feature length films. Do you want and me to introduce myself? I could do it. <laughs> Well, I, I I get mixed feedback. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've introduced I'm someone. You can do whatever you want. I, no, no, no. I introduced yeah. someone fully, and they were like so impressed with the way that I read their intro that they were like, uh -huh. "I'm never introducing myself again. I'm just going to hit play on the one you did." Oh, like, nice. They took it off of online, yeah. and it's like my voiceover of their intro is what cool. they're using because they loved it. Yeah. Um, I might give you a one bullet. I think I'm going to give you, how would you describe, you said something like corporate trainings using improv comedy. Yeah, we do improv uh, comedy trainings for corporations, for um, organizations and for families. And for families. Yeah. Uh huh. I did one on uh, new year's Eve. They called me uh, the day before and they wanted to do some like a, just a fun event with their family, but that still allows you to, you know, there's a lot of things that can work well in a family environment that also work in an organization. No, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by the things that you've told me. Yeah, Whether or not you. you feel they're impressive or not. I'm impressed. <laughs> Some people have to do stuff with me. I don't do a bunch of stuff. And by the time they end up getting through the list of stuff, they're like, I feel like I'm talking about myself, bragging to myself. And the other person is just like, holy shit, man. You're like a superstar. Like, this is the yeah. craziest. Um, I've been really blessed. I've been able to do a lot of cool things, which has been great. Yeah. Improv comedy training for corporate training. That's not right. Uh, for corporations. You can do Corporations, Cor organizations, and families. Corporations. Travis Johnson, nonprofit architect. Patreon.com slash nonprofit architect. On the day with my guest, Chris, Chris Starin. Yep. I wrote improved comedy. Mm -mm. That's Improv. okay. Improv. Common improv mistake. comedy and but, your your autocorrect will almost always correct it to improve yeah that would be an interesting logo improv with like the e in parentheses and yeah. maybe different color comedy uh -huh. chris Starin, who provides improv comedy training for corporations organizations and families Chris, how are you doing today? You're doing great. And then I'll say, tell us a little something about yourself. Yeah. Looking for like a two minute rundown of, if you want to talk about just that and that two-ish minutes is flexible. I had to say two minutes because someone gave me like a 20 minute intro. And Dang. I'm like, their first pie, I didn't give them enough yeah. guidance up front. Yeah. I put that on my checklist already nice um and they just like went and i'm like giving them the x sign until you know yeah and they were psh, not interested green means go just running <laughs> and they right. just went on and they just weren't sure how to like calm themselves down they were excited i don't blame them um, right this is legit uh and then say so, you know hey you know had a, a you know blessed to to host my own podcast also written directed produced two full-length feature films 
also do this. And then improv comedy, kind of how we, uh, you know, we just came in and stuff and all the time like, well, how does that really apply? I mean, that's really cool and amazing. And thank you for the, well, how does that apply to the nonprofit world? Right. And then you would talk through how that yeah, might apply. All that. Yeah. And then I imagine we will bump into something that is really cool yeah. to talk about. You might check notes, try to squeeze in one of the quotes, or we'll come up with another cool quote, no big deal. Sure. Uh, ask you what that looks like in five years or how we can support you as our team or uh-huh. whatever. Kind of have that in the back of your head, how to contact you. And that might look like about 30 minutes. Maybe sure. it looks a little longer. It depends on how it's vibing and going. Yeah. Uh, I've had ones, you know, kind of right about 25, 30 minutes. That was kind of the, just kind of the natural end of it. Yeah. I've had, I think, two that went for an hour and a half plus, and I don't want to stop an amazing train if yeah. I don't have to. Of course. All I good? Think have, I think we've got about half an hour. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. We've, we've been recording for about a half an hour. I know, Early. but I need material of material that I have written out. We've got about half an hour. Okay. You never know. I'm yes ending this. I know you're a podcaster and you understand the flow and all that stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Do you any questions? I don't. I'm all set, but I think I got to figure it out. All right, Mike, kicking off about, about 25 ish minutes in. I try, to, I try to save them from some of that stuff. Of course. Uh, if I can. And as he's listening to this, I'm now going to admit that I've been doing a terrible job at it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's on the checklist, though. <clears throat> Adding to checklist. <laughs> tell, tell Mike when to start editing. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to the Nonprofit Architect Podcast. I'm your host, Travis Johnson. Here today with my guest, Chris Starin. Grab that link in the show notes. Click on patreon.com slash nonprofit architect. Throw us a couple bucks a month. Help us stay on the, on the air. Help support the nonprofit architect and, and our vision for helping you build stronger nonprofit. Chris is the visionary that uses improv comedy training for corporations, organizations, and families. Chris, how are you today? I'm doing real well yourself. You know what? I'm doing mighty fine. Glad to connect with you across oceans and time zones. I think you're all the way in Wyoming. I I just think mass media and the internet is wicked cool. It's amazing. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere. I'm in the middle of nowhere and we can still talk. (laughs) Somehow this equals some kind of corporation or media or company or something. That's uh, fantastic. Creating money with our voices, our information experience, whatever it is, really, really cool. Yeah. We had talked uh, a few weeks back when we had a kind of an intro call. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out how to really connect the things that you're passionate about to my yeah. audience of that, you know, kind of idea to first five years worth of nonprofit operation. And yeah. we landed on this improv comedy scene that you talked about i got really excited chris tell us what the improv comedy training is and how how that all works tell me tell me about that right and as we talk today you'll see that like improv comedy really applies to so many different aspects of life uh being open to life itself being able to say yes when opportunities come to you being able to be silly with your friends, being able to enjoy life much more. Uh, uh, it really helps in a lot of different aspects. And so what we're going to be talking about today and hopefully giving you some tips for your nonprofit organization, we're going to be talking about uh, how to be open to new ideas. We're going to give you some games that you can play uh, with your coworkers uh, to try to open up those creative juices, get those things flowing. And maybe, dare I say, is it possible? Have a little fun at work. So uh, we're hoping that together we can teach you some great tools to be able to do that. It is just mind blowing to me. I, I talk to so many different organizations and, and people in the nonprofit world and, and people in the business world, as a matter of fact, 
And it's interesting to see what does and doesn't work and what strategies people talk about, how to get your team motivated and engaged. And after our discussion, I looked a little bit into the improv comedy training kind of realm, just a little, you know, yeah. toe in the water. And it's really this whole other angle, this whole other area, this whole other perspective and way to not hit the problem in the face, but to really, I mean, it, it's just so different than the mold, not bad, just, right. is just different. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense that it would kind of open up doors uh, to things that you didn't know were really blocking you. Yeah. Improv is great for a log jam. If you have just hit a log jam and you're not sure how you can get through that problem, improv allows you to be able to think about things in different ways and hopefully be okay with just, you know, spitballing ideas that might sound a little crazy at first that maybe you'd be nervous about sharing out loud. And hopefully you can get through that log jam with some of these tools we're going to give you today. Yeah. That is, that is really cool. I'm, yeah. of course, if, if you're a regular listener, <laughs> you know that I'm stationed in the Middle East in the military, active duty Navy. And yeah. so as you might imagine, you know, working hours or some of the working friends, military folk, there's not a lot of playtime at work. No. Especially this is kind of a staff headquarters. There's a, you know, a three-star admiral if you are not in the military. What that means is like, the CEO of a major corporation essentially uh, is walking around your building day to day. So that, that kind of professionalism, that expected decor and military tradition, all those things apply. So how do you engage the corporate world? What, how do you approach them with this, this comedy training idea, this improv idea? Right. Well, I mean, it might be hard. A lot of time it takes action from the top to be okay with things, but uh, even just around the office with your coworkers, with the people that you're working with in the field, if you can uh, try to have to build in some of these tools, if you can have some fun together, uh, if you can open up the conversation so it's not so rigid where you're afraid of failure, uh, you'd be amazed at how you can affect change even from the bottom up. Um, it's easier from the top down, uh, but even from the bottom up, you'd be amazed at what you can do uh, to get things going. Like, um, I was going to ask you, have you ever worked somewhere, Travis, uh, uh, where everybody was grumpy? <laughs> um, Maybe that's a loaded question in the military. Did, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm just going to mm -hmm. say yes. Yeah. Is it yeah. easy when you've got a great idea in a grumpy environment, is it easy? Do you feel welcome to spit out new ideas, to try new things, to, to better the process? It really depends on how yeah. off the wall or outside right. the box that is. It, in that environment, that, that grumpy kind of environment that I think you're describing yeah. might be that type of meeting that you're just in receive only mode. Right. Because it really just kind of has to be that way. And you right. might have an on, offline kind of idea discussion and you would find the appropriate level to try to see if there's room to insert that idea. Right. Uh, like, like my biggest kind of adversary in this region is Iran. <laughs> and um, don't quote me on the, on the distance, but like, they're like 150 miles from us, maybe yeah. 200 miles. From, that's not far. Mm -hmm. So they're right here. It's, it's the edge. And if you watch the news earlier this year, there were, uh, there were some tensions between the two of us for obvious reasons. If you watch the news yeah. and that doesn't allow for anything other than really go time and action time. Right. And there's definitely time for that. It's not sustainable because we're, we're humans and we need to, you know, recharge on a regular basis. Some of us even try to sleep, I guess a third of the day. I hear that's a thing. What? Eight hours. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure. But like in that grouchy environment, at a height and tension, like especially in the military, you might not be able to break that ice. Right. But in the corporate or the nonprofit world, I can see how a couple of failures or a couple of stumbles or a couple of whatevers get yeah. someone into that kind of grouchy mode. But how they would do. you break or attack that in like the nonprofit setting? Well, I think one thing, if you were sort of like – if the grouchy person is your superior, um, be persistent and try it like to keep getting your ideas out there. Don't give up. You know, mm -hmm. that's one of the big things. Don't give up. And then 
Uh, kill them with kindness is one of my favorite sayings. Continue to be kind, continue to do your job well. And that gives you a platform to be able to speak into somebody's life. Now, if you just fire back grumpy all the time, you've, you've closed that door. You've closed, shut down that relationship. But if you can be positive and kill them with kindness, you'd be amazed in where that would go. I had um, a one job that I had. Uh, we had a mechanic, a professional mechanic, a uh, big guy, intimidating big guy. Um, and, and I had to go to him multiple times with issues with the vehicles we were driving and say like, listen, the tires are falling off this thing. You need to take care of it. And I was, I was straight up afraid of this guy, uh, just straight up afraid of his presence. He was always grouching things. Um, but uh, the important thing was like, listen, if I don't say something about what's going on, this vehicle is going to blow up with me in it. You know, I, I need to be, I need to be persistent. I need to be kind. Uh, but I need to be persistent and do my job well. And I think that breaks down barriers. And we did eventually form a nice relationship because he respected me that I was doing my job and keeping after him. Um, but one of the things hopefully we can do, one of my encouragements, especially if you're a supervisor, is uh, allow for some silliness in your workplace. Uh, because if you can be silly, silliness builds friendships. It, it builds relationships. And if you can, you know, nobody wants to work in a, work in a workplace that is just drab and boring all the time. So you have to be allow, allow yourself to have some silliness built in. And, and, and if you don't know how you can do that, you can play some of the games that we're going to play today um, and try to build in some of those things because silliness breeds creativity. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. it's, it's funny that I talk about the, the tensions and the stuff in my, my current work environment there is an office, a good size office mm -hmm. in my building. And this is before the new year. They have Nerf guns in yeah. that office. There's darts. And um, you know, most of the time there's kind of pseudo dart piles and they keep it pretty clean. Right. But every now and again, you'll hear a dart zing over the, there's no like conference or meeting going on, right? You'll hear, yeah. you'll hear a dart zing over the cubicles and 15 seconds later, there's a couple, two, three, sometimes more people going at it. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. And it's just a momentary kind of flash and flare up no yeah. longer than, you know, two, three minutes. And you get a couple chuckles. It's, it's a quick little break. It's better, cleaner, safer than a, than a smoke break and shorter too. Of course. Yes. <laughs> and there's just kind of like this little edge in the office and you got some people ducking and diving and just yeah. a little bit of creativity. But two or three minutes later, it's done. And now right. you're back on, on focus and on topic. And it was just a kind of nice little thing to break up today. Yeah. And those relationships that you build through there are going to make life so much better. You know, they're going to, they're going to, it's going to be so much more fun to work in that place, you know, and, and, and those guys are going to be able to feel that camaraderie that if they got a crazy idea that just might be crazy enough to work, you know, they might be open to actually telling somebody instead of keeping it to themselves. Um, so one of, the, one of the important things I think is important, and I, I'm big on bringing ideas and being open to bringing ideas because sometimes we get this beautiful little thing, but we keep it to ourselves. <laughs> um, uh, the, one, of the, one of the things in improv that's so important is they call it bringing a brick. And, uh, and basically you can imagine we're about to build a house as a team. You have to bring something to the table. Um, now, you've probably been in, a, in a, you look like you got something important to say. What, what do you mean by bring a brick? Bring a brick. Bring an idea. Bring something to contribute. To uh, build you know, with. To build with. Yeah. So uh, you've probably been in that meeting where mm. your boss is like, uh, we've got this problem. I'm freaking out. What are your ideas? And it's like, well, you've been freaking out about this for a couple of days. And you didn't think of a single idea that whole time. Even, you know, even if it's a bad idea, bring something, you know, bring a structure, bring a goal, uh, bring a tool that will get us to the solution. Don't just come panicking, you know, that doesn't do anybody any good. Uh, so in improv, oftentimes it's a two person scene and you're trying to tell a story. And, uh, and, and so what often like the, the brick you're bringing is that suggestion the audience is giving you. Um, and, and then you have to build off of that suggestion to something. But the suggestions could mean a multitude of different things to different people. So like name, name a piece of fruit. 
You see, I didn't know I was going to be on. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing games show. with you. I'll ask the questions here. <laughs> Im- improv scene. I'm the audience. Asking the audience. No, no, ideas. man. You're so in this. Going. Got you. Name a piece of fruit. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we might take pomegranates very differently, you and I. Uh, you might think the scene is about us sharing a pomegranate. It could mm. be that you are hoarding it to yourself. It could be you're drinking a drink that has pomegranate in it. Um, you are going to come up with an idea of what pomegranate means to you in the scene. And then, of course, I'm coming up with something completely different. Um, and that's great. So we're already starting with a bunch of different ideas, which is a great way to start a meeting. You know, if you bring something to the meeting, um, it helps a lot. Again, even if it's just a tool, it's a game, uh, it's, it's like, this is where I'd like to end up. A goal can be very important. Um, bring something to the meeting so that if like the audience in an improv scene shouts out Pomegranate and you're like, ah, Chris has got it. You're leaving me high and dry and all the responsibility is on me. What kind of scene <laughs> partner are you? You know, I'm going to, I want you to come up with stuff. So again, you named a piece of fruit, name an item of, of clothing. T-shirt. T-shirt. And you can, you, you can it. buy ours at our link in the show notes. <laughs> I'm gonna plug in it. Okay, I'm gonna plug my podcast. It's Truce T R U C E. We each get a plug. Every time you plug, I plug. Um, a name, name a relationship, like a doctor patient or a mother daughter. Mm, I think we'll go spouse, husband wife. Husband and wife. Okay, so mm. we're we're bringing things together. Name a board game. Catan. Catan. Okay, yeah. Love it. Love Catan. Love you get a new board every time, and I can dominate you in so many different ways. I love it. I bet. My friends I are bet. playing it right now in like the next building. Oh, that's but killing I had an appointment, and I think you're important yeah. too. Well, I think you're important as well. Um, the uh, so here's the thing: we've we've brought something, and in in our meetings, in our discussions, it's important to bring something, even if it's not great. But trust yourself to come up with something, and trust your group, trust your coworkers to be able to take that idea and work with it. Now, just as important as bringing something is being able to drop your thing. So if we're in a scene, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, you know, I, you're- I, I'm yeah. in the military. Yeah. And there's a lot of firstborn A types and you've uh-huh. been trained. <laughs> Training is your thing for your whole career. So when you come up with a thing idea, you got the yeah. backbone or whatever, it yeah. is tough for a lot of people in the military right men and women alike to let go of their thing right i I think we're getting kind of to a phase where it's more and more you know a little bit more relaxed a little bit more understood it's more scientific Uh i know a a thing but i might not know all the things and this thing might be beneficial or not or i'm not sure how my thing fits in oh it's crap okay you just let me know right (laughs) there's definitely been some times where i will not let my thing go, I am dying right. on this hill for this yeah. thing. We're talking about post-it notes. None of your business. Right. I'm holding on to the post-it note idea for the whatever. Right. And Let, sometimes ooh, we're really huge. bad at that. And that kills an environment. It kills a work environment. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in an improv comedy scene, uh, again, we're up there usually two of us. And I have to be able to trust you to bring something. But then if I say we're in outer space together and you say no, we're on a fire truck. You just shot down my idea. And that scene hasn't progressed at all. You know, so now we have to play it like what? I'm crazy and I think I'm in outer space, but we're in a fire truck. Or maybe, you know, it, it doesn't move the scene forward. It, 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 it just totally uh, destroys where we've been going. And the same can be true in a meeting. You know, if, if somebody comes up with an idea and it's, it's maybe better than your idea. You have to be able to drop your thing. Or maybe their idea is more time sensitive than your idea. So You have to so be able what, to table your stuff. So what might this look like in a, in a nonprofit? This might look yeah. like a discussion for your next fundraising idea. Right. Someone throws out you know, the elegant, the standard gala. Let's say and this just came up in one of my groups. They're acronym is LIFT. I forget what yeah. LIFT stands for, but they're trying to use LIFT in a name to talk about the gala. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with this. And there's ways, you know, lift, uh, like lift us up together and lift this and yeah. lift that. 
And I've seen a couple of, you know, different section, different things. Like they take something that's completely not like their brand at all, completely off the wall, and they might use it for a volunteer fundraiser. So my comment was, do you even lift, bro? As yeah. like a summer volunteer appreciation around a jam or something. And I got into a little sidebar conversation with this gal, and she's like, I love it. And if I can talk my nonprofit into using that for some other you know, area of their thing. They're definitely going to use it. Think of like end of summer kind of fun type of fundraiser, uh -huh. but it's so different than a straight gala where it's black tie. It's very proper and it's still using the name, but how do you have those two competing ideas in the same meeting? They're right. both excellent ideas and they really yeah. are. Do you one now one later? Do you... you could one could be for another event that's coming up. You could have it next. You could be planning next year's event already, which is mm -hmm. awesome. I'm a big fan in meetings of, of dry erase boards. I know they're a little cliche, but if you could just like make lists of things and just have a, a, a session where you just wrap and go for things. But of course, brain dump, brain dump and on the board, throw it up, up there and you Part might that, cross it off later, but you've got it on the You've board captured. It. Right. And, 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 and hold your critiques of other people's ideas until you're done, you know, like just brain dump at first, but I'll tell you that this takes a lot of planning because you have to be able to give people enough time. If you're in a meeting and you're like, okay, the client's coming in half an hour and we need an idea right now. It's very different than, Hey, listen, the client's coming in two weeks. We've got time. Let's, let's think about this, you know, Mm -hmm. Plan in advance so you have time worked out to be able to come up with ideas. And one of the beauties of improv is like, you've got all the time in the world. You've got this two hour show or whatever to work out these ideas. It doesn't have to be solved right now. You know, it, it can, you can let it breathe. You know, you have to give people the, the space where they can be creative and the time where they can be creative. If you're always in a rush, you got to go with the first idea. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have time, you can, you know, brain dump on that dry erase board and, and make those ideas work for you. You know, absolutely. So nonprofit listeners out there, we talked about a, a 30 a client showing up in 30 minutes, a client showing up in two weeks. We talked about next end of year gala or event. Yeah. You could and should have a framed out. This is what crisis or short term pseudo planning cycle looks like. Yeah. What are the key one, two, or three things we got to hit and have an answer for in a super time compressed thing? You need to have a time planning cycle for a, a weekish, two weekish, monthish. Like, hey, what does this look like meeting wise, planning wise? What pieces do we need, where, and why? And this is going to take some time to put together as where a quarterly, semi annual, or annual event you've got. Time is your friend, unless you forget about it, that's your enemy, but you have a different planning cycle, a different rhythm to hit those events and make those things happen. Just if you're listening, that's kind of a little thing I wanted to talk about. Right. Now it's out there. You have way more freedom if you plan in advance. You can't be as creative if you don't plan in advance because you're limited on resources. Now, the other thing is if you've got an idea and I've got an idea mm -hmm. is we can meet together in the middle. You know, we can, we can find a place between those two things that works really well. And there's a game we can play to work this out. I'm going to rope you into this again. Um, are, are we using so, pomegranate t-shirt and husband wife relationship? <laughs> I wrote them down if I have to use them. I don't, I don't have my improv chops. I'd be interested in getting a, yeah. a little class. I think it's a cool concept, but yeah, yeah. I'm taking notes because I want to be in this. Okay. Okay. Now I want you to come up with a random word that we haven't said before. And I'm going to say a random word at the same time. Okay. Uh, so we're just a count of three. It's going to be one, two, three. And then you say your random word. I'm going to say my random word. Is it the on three or is it a three then say? Oh, one, the two, three, three, boom. There it is. One, two, three, and then boom. Okay. So yeah. uh, one sec for the, <laughs> the random word. I'm trying to remember my word from the year, but that was so three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then I had a new word that came up with this week. So, okay. Okay. I'm ready. I got my word when you are. Okay. One, two, three, book. Finish. Finish book. Okay. Um, and I think the time delay is going to work against us on this. But so what we need to do together is try to find a word between those two. Finish and book. Oh, okay. Don't between? say what it is. 
a word yeah. between? Yeah. So oh, you and I are going to continue this. We're like going to take those sentence? words. No, no. We're going to try to find, uh, you were, we're each going to say one more word again at the count of three. And uh, knowing finish and knowing book, you think of a word that somehow combines those two. I'm going to think of a word that somehow combines two. And we're going to keep doing this until we arrive at the same word. Finish Ooh. and book. Yeah. I'm sure you'll tell us what this exercise means, but I like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. One, two, three, goal. Publish. Publish, goal. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So we're going to try to do that again Ooh. until we get in between the two. So we're, so we're between publish, publish and, goal. and goal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I have a word between those two. What just some what anticipate what you think I'm gonna say. Publish and goal. No? I, I, I don't man. know. Be I don't free, know. Be open. Look, I'm 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 no my audience is judging me right now. I'm not good at <laughs> I'm not good no, at improv. See, this is improv. It's supposed chops. to be a no judgment goal, a no judgment space. Uh, okay. th there's not going to be a wrong answer here. I feel like this is an angry face, like on a t-shirt. This is supposed to be a no judgment zone. No, yeah, you're <laughs> fine. Yeah. And this is stuff you can play together. It's silly and it's good mm -hmm. to laugh together and, and, mm -hmm. and it's fine. Uh, so just, just be open to it. So between publish, publish and, and goal. goal. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, deadline. Author. Publishing goal, deadline, and author. Okay. Mine okay. wasn't between, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> no? That's okay. Well, the, the whole point of this exercise is eventually we should end up on the same word. Um, I don't want to bore your audience getting us there. Well, uh, well I think this might be important yeah. because if they can't see yeah. how uh, the exercise plays out, now if we go like three more rounds and we don't get nothing, I'll be about to okay. call it. But if they don't have the example in front of them, how can they take the example and run with it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Between yeah. Author and author and deadline. Deadline. Yeah. Author okay. And deadline. Okay. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Right. Date. Right date. Okay. 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 We'll do it again. One, two, three. Schedule. Uh. I didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> schedule, the, how did you know? Schedule, how did you know? The, the important thing is that, see, we're laughing. We're already, we're, this builds relationship. It opens up ideas. Um, but it also, like, is to illustrate that point. Sometimes in a meeting, you're going to have an idea that's pretty good. And somebody else is going to have an idea that's also pretty good. And there might be a place in between those two that will work for both of you. Um, so sometimes, you know, you, you need to bring a brick, you need to drop your brick if it, if the other person's idea is better. Um, but sometimes also you can meet in the middle and find something that's going to work. You're going to find a way to gel those two things. Um, I like that. And I think it's important to note that the person who's setting down their brick for the better idea, it might not just, it might just not be the right time. It's true. For that idea. Yeah. There's, there was. 10 or 15 years ago, there was this super forward thinking, forward leaning group. I can't remember the name, can't remember the company. I'm sorry. If you know it, you know, throw in the comments somewhere. Great. But uh, they started a grocery delivery service. Nice. Which is a great idea, but it, the market just, they weren't thinking about that as a thing and a need yet. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward to today, you have basically online or curbside pickup at Walmart or grocery stores. We can mm -hmm. go in right and you can say i want to grocery shop these things and you just pull up they throw it right in the back and, and you're off it's already paid for online and then there's one step further with like uber eats or over in this uh, country we have talibat where they'll give you hot food delivery or they'll grab groceries for you and bring it to you for like right. a couple of bucks uh, which is fantastic and it's working now you got postmates in the u.s some other stuff but 15 years ago the market just wasn't ready for the idea right yep yeah so sitting down your brick might not be just because it's a worse idea. It might just not be the right time for your, it's your true. market, your donor, your whatever, the group that you're with. It might just be mm -hmm. too advanced for right now. Right. And that takes humility. It takes humility to be able to table an idea 
But you know, I also am a big fan. I've got this big notebook here of ideas. <laughs> and uh, I'm a big fan of keeping notebooks full of ideas for that reason. Whatever do you Look mean? Look at that thing. Whatever Look at all that do scratch. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, another really good tool with that, with that humility, with that uh, being able to mix our two ideas together is this, this, there's like one phrase you hear in improv all the time. And that is, yes, and. Mm. So and we were talking this, about that and that I love yeah, that. Yeah. It's this idea that like, so you're going to say, Hey, we're in outer space. I'm going to then take that idea that we're in outer space on the stage and I'm going to take it one step further and be like, yes. And I've loved our time here on the moon. Yeah. And, and it helps both. I think it helps both kind of partners get on a closer to the same page. You get closer it to does. that one word. So when right. you go to, I mean, I don't know, right? I don't have the terrain, but it's, I'm trying to understand this. And yeah. anyway, I just try to understand this. Now you're both closer to the right idea and you're closer to being on the same page where you can work together. Right. right. And, and it helps to be like, okay, I love your idea. We're in outer space. Let's take that and let's continue to build on it. You know, and that's, that's, that's how great projects are made, how great products are made, how great organizations are made, is if we start with a great idea and everybody builds on it together and everybody's on the same page mm -hmm. and can then add to it. Um, so yes, yes um, and yes and and that's the way it's like an improv comedy again if somebody says uh, you know you say we're in outer space and I say N you no know, we're in a burning building we've gotten nowhere and the audience is confused we're confused but if I say yes and I'm taking your idea and I'm building on it I'm contributing to it um, and, and, and you'll see that scenes are way more interesting if we're not arguing, but we're on the same page as to where it's going. Um, that's, that's sort of the, in improv comedy, uh, you know a beginner if they're arguing on stage. If they're, ah. if they're having, if they're working together, they're actually going somewhere together and they're, they're moving forward. So I tips, have another game we can play. <laughs> tips, tips to be an improv snob. If yeah. you see them arguing on stage, just know that they're a new and then you know, chastise them later. Right, please. Or, or yeah. give them encouraging words later. Right. Yeah. So I, I have another game we can, we can play to build on this. Yes, and. Yes, and. Can we give uh, them the, the context and the idea behind the game before we go into the game? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea for this game is to encourage you and your um, teammates to be able to listen to each other, um, to be able to take those things we've already uh talked about being able to take the idea that came just before you drop your thing if it doesn't apply and then build on what they've said that's the goal with the and goal also of, of getting to some kind of consensus for the get to a consensus thing. to move the story forward yeah like um and, yeah and uh uh this is fun again a lot of these games you can you can illustrate these points but it also can be fun to just break the ice in a meeting, um, in, uh, in a group, especially if you're getting to know each other for the first time, these can be very valuable tools. You can just play these games and have a good time. Uh, so this is, this is a game called Yes And, for obvious reasons. I like, and, the, uh, I like the title, it's straightforward. Yeah, and uh, so we're just gonna try to tell a basic story, you and I, uh, one line at a time. And each line has to start with yes and da 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 da. Um, and so we're just going to try to build on a story. So what would be like um, a fairy tale, like a really popular fairy tale? Well, you always got the, the hero's journey, right? They use that in right. Harry Potter. They use it in Lord of the Rings. They use, you know what? Uh, let's do let's do the Harry Potter. What do you think? Harry Potter. Okay, how does Harry Potter end for the audience who may who may not know? Uh, I don't want to, you know, spoiler alert. Just for my, <laughs> my fans out there, spoiler alert. It's several years old. I think we're okay. Uh, Harry Potter, uh, through many different books slash movies, he has killed Voldemort in many forms, but finally yeah. kills Voldemort. Yeah. Spoiler alert over. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's, let's in our story here, one line at a time, we're going to tell you what happened after the books ended, right? So this is after Happily Ever After. That's our goal. What happened after Harry Potter ended? Um, so we can start the story. Um, would you would you like to start? Can you give us the first line of this story? Yes, and I can give you the first line of the story. 
Uh, so Harry Potter is there standing over his vanquished full Voldemort as his body steams and the life drains out of him. So I'm going to start my sentence, yes, and and continue on what you said. Yes, and he realized he was very tired and needed a nap. Yes, and because he is a wizard, he was able to conjure a bed right next to him immediately. Yes, and he had the best night of sleep he'd ever had. Yes, and his friends were kind of upset about him because who vanquishes a great foe, conjures a bed, and immediately takes a nap while everyone is still standing around them. Yes, and Harry Potter uh, told them about his license deal with Serta Mattresses and that he was contractually obligated to sleep on a bed when he vanquished his enemy. Yes, and I'm kind of surprised that he settled on Serta when he had uh, much more lucrative offers from Purple Mattress and Craft Are Matic they sponsors of your show? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yes, and uh, he uh, signed the mattress and put it up on eBay. Yes, and surprisingly, or not surprisingly to our friends in the nonprofit world, that mattress sold for $10 million and was able to fund all of your nonprofit ideas. See, great. Yeah, you were able to tie it back around to your podcast. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and plug Truce Podcast again. That's T-R-U-C Podcast, because I get to do it every time you do yours. Um, <laughs> but you see, we were able to take a very basic idea, uh, a story that we all know, uh, and build on it at, together, working together, yes ending. Um, and there, was, there wasn't a point where you said, no, he didn't fall asleep. He went grocery shopping or whatever. That, that would have derailed the whole forward momentum of that thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially when you are um, storyboarding or doing that brain dump you were talking about. Um, you don't want to start knocking down ideas right away. It's better to be like, oh, let's take that idea and see where we can go with it. You know, let, mm -hmm. let's, let's build on that idea. Because it's, it's so much easier to just knock somebody down. But what happens when you knock somebody down? You know, you, you make them quiet. They don't want to speak again. What else? What are you going to say? What happens you, when you're knocking them? You, you take away their willingness to want to contribute. Yeah. And that's almost, that's almost exactly what you said. And why would I contribute if I'm just going to get shot down? And not only shot down, but you know, berated and, and possibly demoralized just because I had an idea. Some of my ideas, let's be honest, they're going to be garbage. Or yeah. they're going to not lie. Or they're going to be for later. Or they might be a seed of a good idea or it might be a perspective change or it might be a fantastic idea, but all of those are in the range of each person and what they have to yeah. contribute. And when you do something like a brain dump and you throw all these on the board, right. there's going to be a chunk that are yeses and how can we move forward? There's going to be a chunk that are just like, come on guys, did you, you know, were you drinking before work? Some of those are going to be uh, for future development. Some of them are going to be tabled for a longer time frame and some of them, are going to spark different departments and different ideas and different thoughts and totally right. different realms of thinking yeah. that only works if you allow them to get on the board right? and then you don't make people feel like trash during the process. Right. And that's important, especially for your quieter team members, uh, the, the, the shy people, uh, the introverts, uh, they might have the best ideas in the room, but if you're always shooting them down, they, they might retract into themselves. There was um, uh, Gary Marshall uh, who wrote, uh, or excuse me, who directed Pretty Woman and created Mork and Mindy and mm -hmm. all these other great TV shows. Also used to write for Your Show of Shows, uh, which was an old black and white show way before us. Uh, but another writer on that was um, Neil Simon. Uh, and Neil Simon, you know, wrote The Odd Couple and all these really great plays uh, that kind of like shaped uh, Broadway in the 1900s. But Neil Simon was super quiet. Um, and and uh, they often in a, in a writer's room, they would drown him out. But uh, Gary would make room for Neil and say like, uh, Neil, what do, what do you think about this? And inevitably, it brought the room down, you know, like everybody just died laughing because they let Neil Simon talk, you know, and there might be somebody in your 
workplace who might be like that, who has the best ideas, but you know, it's just shy. And if you shoot yeah. people down instead of saying yes and, or allowing that space for them to create, you could be losing some amazing ideas. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and the shyness might be, might be one component. Uh, another component might be they're new to the organization right? or, yeah. uh, you know, for my military friends, they might have a lower rank than you. Yes. But realize the people that are new to the organization or have a lower rank, you don't know their whole backstory, mm -hmm. right? You might have a guy that comes in that has a degree in X and you know that because they fell the application to the interview mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, and something comes up for come, some kind of, I don't know, expansion of a building, mm -hmm. your office space, your whatever the thing is. What you don't know, it, what his degree didn't tell you is that his dad's a contractor and he grew up bidding contracts, actually doing the carpentry work, actually doing the drywall, actually doing the, electric, the electrical and the yeah. whatever, the whole scene behind the scene. And you tell him to shut up because he's the new guy. He might have just given you the most world class knockdown, drag out, save you money, ideas, run through, build up, all the details involved with the construction and building. Mm -hmm. And you had them right here for free. You're already paying them $8 an hour, whatever the thing is. Right. But because he was the new guy, you didn't let him talk. And right. all you did was make yourself A, look stupid, B, say you're not a boss when you listen to ideas, and C, cost you actual dollars and time because yeah. the answer was in the room, but you didn't allow, you let your personal whatever bravado get in the right. way of listening to the expert you already had on staff. Right, yeah, yeah, you gotta be open to that stuff. And I used to make uh, independent films and in our film, Bringing Out Bobby, it's a comedy. Um, and sometimes our crew guys would have, like they would just be whispering to each other. And I'd be like, what, what are you whispering about? And they would have the best w a joke to add into a, into a scene. And we did it over and over and over again. And it made the movie so much better because we were able to listen to those people who were whispering, who, you know, were a little shy about talking. You about plug your show, I plug. You plug <laughs> your stuff, I plug yeah, my stuff. Plug, Check out my side for, blog, Warrior's Wallet, to really it. dissect what you're doing in your financial love world. It. I helped yeah. 400 families pay off $6 million in debt over the last 15 years. Nice, man. Good plug. That's a solid plug. I, I, the, another thing I wanted to talk about, along with listening to, your, to people who are quieter, um, is that relationships are king in improv. Um, uh, if you have a relationship with somebody, they're much more likely to contribute. They're much more likely to feel fulfilled uh, in that relationship. I mean, like work, we spend a tremendous amount of our time at work, uh, you know, 40 hours or whatever a week, that's a lot of time. And uh, if, if you don't have those relationships, uh, it's gonna make work feel like a drag. Um, and you're gonna wonder why you're there and your retention rate is gonna be really mm. bad. Um, yeah. on, on improv, relationships are important because you could have two people doing a scene and yeah, maybe they're talking about baseball or something, but if you don't know who they are to each other, it just falls flat because you can only talk about baseball for so long and keep it interesting. But the, if you're talking- The relationship, and you, you brought up earlier yeah. the pick one, and I said husband and wife, yeah. you're talking about husband that kind wife. of relationship. Or right. now, pick your relationship. Yeah, isn't it much more interesting? If you've got two strangers talking about baseball, not so interesting. But if you've got a husband and wife talking about baseball, now uh, maybe one of them is angry at the other and they're upset that they're at this game when maybe the other person didn't want, it was like maybe they didn't want to come. Or maybe like the wife is way better at baseball than the husband and that uh, creates some tension there. You know, like, uh, or maybe they, they're just like a hilarious like uh, duo that they, you know, one's a great pitcher, one's a great hitter. You know, it's so much more interesting when you have that relationship in the mm. scene. Um, whereas, you, you know, you take a scene that was just about baseball before and you add in that context of a relationship. It's so much better. It's so much better. And the, the same is true again in your workplace. If you are ignoring those relationships with your coworkers, it's, it's going to be dull and your people are going to hate working for you. Um, and sometimes, <laughs> right? I mean, we've all been there. Uh, sometimes it, it can be as simple as like taking somebody out to lunch uh, or, you know, bringing somebody, you're bringing a dessert, sharing something. Uh, uh, I find um, 
in new environments, like at a conference or something, I like to carry a little notebook around and then I'll write down not just the name of the person, uh, but also some little tidbit about their family, about their life, uh, their hobbies, um, something like that. Because everybody has something that is fascinating about them. Everybody's got some like dopey little interests. I, I, am, I am fascinated with Napoleon Bonaparte. I don't think he was a great guy, uh, but I could read book after book about the guy. I don't know why, but I could also talk to about him all the time. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and that's one of those things that like, if you knew me, um, uh, you might bring that up. You know, hey, Chris, have you read any interesting books about Napoleon or whatever? And that builds community. It builds yeah. a relationship because it means like, not only are you talking, but I'm listening. Well, you show caring. You show that you right. actually care about right. someone's interest. And super side note, if you want to yeah. really connect with something, find what their thing that they can talk all day about and they love and they're passionate about. Right. And just ask them a couple of questions. They'll say you had a great talk. You connected this huge bonding relationship. You, you, you found their, their thing that they like. You asked them two or three questions and you just let them run with it and listen, and they right. feel like they got to unleash, unwind, unveil yeah. this whole secret part about themselves yeah. and really connect with you, whether you really contributed to the conversation or not, you allowed that to happen. And you allowing right. that to happen not only strengthens the bond, but they're more likely to then engage you at the thing you're passionate about if you let them it's true. first. It's true, and they feel listened to and wanted. And we're talking mm -hmm. one to two minutes a day. We're not talking about a huge commitment. You know, this is, this is something that can be easy and fast, um, but, but, but we'll build a lot of uh, commitment to your organization um, and maybe loyalty. And you'll see maybe even people working harder because they know that you are interested in them, not just mm. what they can give you. They don't care about how much you know till they know about how much you care. Wow, isn't that nice? How many t-shirts is that on? <laughs> well, it's you about to be those? on the one for oh. this episode, at least, <laughs> with my name on it. Okay, well, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Do I get to plug my show or no? Uh, does that count as a plug? <laughs> I think you brought it up, so I don't know if it's a plug I did, or okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, so we've got another improv game. I want to just throw you in into the mess here uh, and have some fun. They can into illustrate the mess. A, into, into the, the mess. mess. Yeah, uh, this is a game. I love this game. It's called Where Have My Fingers Been? It sounds a little naughty. It's not. Um, but I, we're going to work on incorporating all those things we've already talked about. Yes and, relationships, um, and uh, uh, being able to bring a brick. Bring this, is, something. this is great because I feel like I'm in my own little improv comedy. like Training class. Yeah, pre-training class. The pre-meeting to the meeting to the real meeting. Yeah. Uh, to then have well, a meeting for the follow-up meeting. But yeah, yeah. definitely in the pre-improv comedy training class. I love this. Yeah. yeah. And this, again, this is a game you can play, uh, you know, just like at a, at a company picnic or whatever, just to have some fun. Where have my fingers been? Um, and it starts with a little song. It goes, where have my fingers been? I said, where have my fingers been? And we're going to do a three-line scene. It's just three lines long. Anybody can do this. It's just one finger talking to the other finger. Uh, and so you're going to try to establish a relationship between you, uh, what's going on, and then sort of like build on that idea. That, that's what we're looking for. Uh, you know, who are we? Who are these fingers to each other? Uh, what are they bringing? What is sort of the, I don't want to say conflict, but like what is the, the story of this story? What is going on? Um, and, uh, and maybe raise that tension just a little bit, just in so, three lines. So we got, where have my fingers been? Where have my fingers said, been? Where have my fingers been? Yeah. I said, where have my fingers been? Yeah. Um, and you want to talk about three things, a relationship, uh, a you're what, gonna try a what? to build those into the scene. Yeah. It's basically just the relationships, uh, between the two of them. Like, again, that could be doctor, patient, mother, daughter, husband, wife, whatever you want. Who are they to each other? The relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you want some kind of forward movement. It could be some, some would say in a storytelling context, the conflict, you know, it doesn't have to be between the two of them, but it could be their shared goal. It could be what they want, uh, something. And then uh, you want to raise the stakes on that just a little bit. Um, so we've got a basic problem and then we're going to raise the stakes a little bit in three lines. 
So it's not, it's not too bad. <laughs> Anybody can do it. And here's the other thing we haven't talked a lot about. I mean, yes, you have to be silly, but you have to be willing to fail. Okay. You have mm -hmm. to be open to the idea that failure is okay. Builds character. And um, if you're, if you're too afraid to fail, you'll never try anything and you're never going to get anywhere. So you got to be open to failure. And so if, these you, if you do something wrong, you got to do it twice. Yeah. 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 That's, that's another thing we, <laughs> it's, it's a rule in comedy is if you mess up, if you stumble, do it a second time. If you fail, do it twice. Uh, because uh, if, if say you're on stage and you trip and it's an accident, do it again. And it becomes a characteristic of your character right? Who's on stage. You suddenly become a part of the joke. We were talking um, before the interview about the military and how easy it is for people to pick on you in the military. Um, if you far, you break wind in, in public. This is a family like, show, Chris. Is it? <laughs> I think we're all aware that true. families fart. Uh, but uh, <laughs> You have two options. People probably heard you do it. You have two options. You can either be embarrassed and let people make fun of you, or you can be a part of the joke, right? You can own that. And by, you can own that by farting again. Um, uh, in, as just in comedy in a scene, if you mess up, you can do it twice. Mm -hmm. And it goes from being a mistake to something that you meant to do, or something that you can be a part of the joke on. Rather than being the butt of a joke, you're part of the joke. So be, be, be okay with failure. Um, it's totally fine. So we have our little song. Uh, it's going to go, where have my fingers been? I said, where have my fingers been? And then you can just give me a location. Are we talking like plain language, like Buenos Aires, or you want me to sing the response? You, no, no, I'm sorry. You can just give me a location, any, any location. Okay. Or you want me to say it right now? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, yes. Give, please give me a location. Petra Jordan. Petra Jordan. Oh, Dave, I'm so glad we came here on our honeymoon. Oh, this is where Indiana Jones was. Sarah, I wanted to tell you that while we're in Petra, I, I got chased by a rolling boulder. You got chased by a boulder just like Indiana Jones? Oh, my hero. And that's where my fingers been. I said, where have my fingers been? I said, where have my fingers been? Uh, so you you're using this as everyone. like, so the people obviously aren't seeing the video. You're using your fingers oh, right. to talk like puppets. Yes, like puppets. Ah, like that's puppets. what I was missing. So one finger, yes, one finger okay. one person, one finger is another. <laughs> and then you move Back forward. to G-rated show, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to G-rated show. So you just try to create a little scene with your fingers talking to each other. And they're different characters. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here and see if you can try this. Take the things that we've learned. You have an editor. You can edit this out if you want to. Uh, but <laughs> Thank you, are you Michael Blaze, for being amazing. You are in a space where you are allowed to fail. You are welcome. You know, you are welcome to just throw your ideas out there. Um, so I'm going to sing a little song. And I'm going to give you a suggestion of a location. And then and I'm going to do the scene. Do the three-line scene there. Yeah. So where okay. have my fingers been? I said, where have my fingers been? You are at a Chuck E. Cheese. Dad, thank you so much for taking me to the Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, I really loved it here when I was growing up. The, the characters were amazing and I had a lot of fun. Yeah, but I'm kind of you know scared of the giant animatronic you know, animals. They're like singing, they're kind of creepy. Yeah, I know, son. And, and we had the same you know, problems growing up but we had all these complaint boxes. They call them suggestion boxes. I don't know if the bosses really check them out. But so apparently we're at four scenes. We're at four lines. Let me stop you oh. there. Yeah, you get three lines. Oh, I can lines. just keep going forever. <laughs> You're a natural born improviser. Look at that. <laughs> well, I did a lot of lying girl up growing up, so I figured oh, it might count. Oh, yeah. Well, Super I, lying. I loved it I was, when I was a kid. One of the great things in improv is you usually clap for each other because uh, you did a great job. Um, <laughs> you, you really got it though. Like we knew who they were, father and son, right? Mm -hmm. We knew where they were because of the, the, the pizza and, you know, or the, the games. And I used to love to come here when I was a kid. Um, we, we know that there's a history there now. 
because yeah. the father has similar memories. And of course, there's a little bit of tension because the kid is afraid of the animatronic animals. Um, you know, and so we've got a bit of tension. So you, you incorporated like everything that we talked about into that, that little short scene. So good work. Congratulations. <laughs> it wasn't that scary, right? I, once so, you explained the fingers are actually like puppets and people talking, that's the yeah. piece that I needed. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I wasn't uh, always the best sailor slash person. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Professional. Yeah. That's a whole other game and, and definitely not show appropriate, but. Right. Yeah, I got it now, and it makes sense. Yeah. You're setting, mm, I like it. Very interesting, yeah, cool. You're, yeah, you're building relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, you're saying yes and to ideas. You're taking a small idea and building on it. Um, and you, you know, failure was a real option, you know, but you faced that failure and you were, had courage and you went after it, and that is awesome. Um, and that's, that's something you can do, even that s silly little basic game, you can do it. Um, around a big circle of people, each having a three-line scene. Oh, hashtag, what's that? Hashtag was not edited. Was not edited. <laughs> we did that live, folks. We did it live. Yeah. We did it, and the first time. Yeah, there yeah, was no yeah. second take on that no one. No second take. Uh, but that, that being able to feel like you're in a safe environment, you know, where people are not going to hate you for having thrown out your idea. They're not going to hate you if you fail. That is so important to creativity. Um, and, and in your organizations, in your nonprofits, um, having an environment where people can be afraid, uh, can be free to throw out good ideas is so valuable because um, uh, they have a relationship with you already by this point. Um, they, they can now feel free to toss out ideas, which may revolutionize the way you run your organization. Those, those little ideas that those quiet people give you. Um, if, they're, if they are not afraid to fail, you're going to get some great stuff out of everybody. And, and what this might look like and what you might have seen in the past when we talk about throwing ideas to build something up. If you're talking something like a product development, and I know there's maybe not a lot of product developers out here, but something like the iPod. At the time, music was tape CDs or on the radio. There wasn't really, quote unquote, internet music. There, there kind of was internet music. Well, you're building a product like this. There's ideas that are going to come into it and you're going to build this thing. And this thing is not the thing you're moving forward with. And when you get to kind of, all right, we're stopping with the new ideas. You're going to look at what you have and you're going to strip away the access to get the access to get down to this kind of core idea of what it really is. And the iPod itself, it, very popular, revolutionized the way we did music. The tagline was a thousand songs in your pocket. Mm -hmm. clean easy the usability is easy it's a it's a little dial and no i'm not uh getting paid by microsoft or anything like that but the functionality yet simplicity of it when they broke down all the kind of the fluff to get down to the core stuff is what helped make it just a wonderful product mm -hmm. so when you have these ideas for whatever kind of event whatever kind of connection with donors whatever it is that you're looking at to do in your your business your nonprofit, or whatever you're doing it you're going to have these ideas kind of thrown together like molding clay you're just glopping it on each other but eventually you're going to carve that thing down you're going to fine tune it to, to reveal the, the beauty of the product the service the whatever and get down to its core components so this, this isn't a linear process this is throwing ingredients into a mixing bowl that all looked very different at the start, mixing up, making some kind of solution, you know, putting it under that heat, that stress test in, in the oven, and then coming out with a cake and you're gonna have something, a great base, but you might add a little frosting and a little flair to make it really palatable. So the building the service thing, building the product thing is gonna involve this process where you're taking stuff, you're throwing it together, you're mixing it up, putting it under the stress, that heat, stress test, having something that's, that's palatable, but maybe adding a little flair to it. And that's what the process might look like as you're building some of your ideas, programs, products, or services. It's not going to be a clean, easy, straightforward. And maybe you have a, uh, you know, a flour fight in between, unless you're gluten-free, then I don't know, rice cauliflower fight or something. I don't know how that works, but uh, those things, the process isn't clean, but if you create the space and the environment, and you allow the things Chris has been talking about, the yes and the not being afraid to fail and not getting smashed for you're having your ideas, but actually bringing a brick to the show to help build something together. 
you can create these things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Whatever those things are for your organization. And that, that takes trust uh, between people. You know, you need to be able to build trust amongst your coworkers uh, that, that, that they can have a safe space. Like what's something that destroys trust? Have you ever had somebody just like smash your trust? There's um, gossiping. Like for me in an organization, yeah. gossiping, if mm -hmm. you've ever worked with me directly, you'll know this. I don't tolerate it. Mm -hmm. I think it is something, if, if you have a thing that bothers you, the person you have to vent about, perfectly fine, understandable, vent about it to your significant other, a designated person that you have. But if you're in the smoke pit, water cooler, lunch area, and you're talking about venting to that person, or, hey, I heard a thing about someone you work with, I will get rid of you so fast if you don't adjust your thing. Gossiping is, as you can visibly tell, yeah. uh, super, super bothers me. Yeah, it's it not allowed. Not trust. A, yeah. Oh, it just destroys it. Just it destroys does. it. Yeah. If, if you have a question and you're kind of asking it as a concern, I think the thing is the whatever. Do the adult mature thing. Find a venue where you can talk to that person and get the kind of, hey, the, the, this thing kind of happened. I wasn't sure how to take it. Did you mean it like this? And is it, mm -hmm. if you ask it like, is a, a asking for a clarification, I wasn't sure thing. Mm -hmm. chances are they're going to explain it nine times out of 10, 99 times out of a hundred, it's going to be a, a thing that they didn't know that they were doing that bothered you right. or, or they were in a bad mood or that, you know, it's not their regular, they're going to be able to probably explain it. They're not going to turn around yeah. and blast you in the face with it again, unless they've also been withholding a thing that, you know, has bothered them about it. <laughs> Don't go I went on a diatribe when you were looking for a short answer. That's fine, man. No, Sorry I love it. That. <laughs> That's valuable because, yeah. um, especially like in an improv group, we, you you were just like a band, you know, like a, a traveling band together, um, and and gossip will destroy your relationships together. Um, another other things that would be would destroy it would be like anger. Um, if somebody's just carrying anger around all the time. Mm -hmm. That destroys trust. Uh, violence destroys trust. Um, in improv, I've had uh, people slap me before on stage. Like we're just like two people on stage and they just haul off and slap me. I can't trust that person anymore because now they, I know that they don't have my back. Um, and that kind of thing just is, is terrible in an organization. Uh, it, it makes you feel bad. But now what, we'll turn around to something positive. What is something that builds trust? Uh, so, uh, uh, in improv, we always clap for each other, like I was mentioning at the end of a scene. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't a great scene, uh, you, you try to let people know it's okay. It's okay to fail. Um, it's much worse to never try. You know, so you can oh, applaud absolutely. failures. It's, if, if somebody never tries anything, they're not going to be any good for your organization. But if they're okay to, to try something and fail, that's way better than not trying anything at all. One of the things that I really like and I really try to do, you know, even in the military, I'm not always successful at it, but I try to, to, to be intentional with giving some kind of feedback. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's a new thing, yeah. I try to give only positive feedback. We had uh, some, some training uh, at work today, real time. Uh, it was the first time we implemented a kind of a training program for a group of people that didn't really have a training an ongoing training. We had an initial training program, but not an ongoing training program for the thing. And it was just the, the first, you know, 1.0 iteration of one of the topics. And we went through and we did it. And I, I had another meeting immediately after, but I made sure to go back and said, Hey, you know, the training we did earlier, uh, and you know, we already have a relationship. I really like the format. We got to, you know, we, we walked through some of the process, we covered some of the big topics. We did kind of a little uh, exercise. And then we kind of walked through the exercise together and you know, you facilitated very well and you were very positive and, and you highlighted you know, key points. And I really appreciate the training this morning. Now, first off, uh, all of those things are true. Right. Uh, I, I definitely feel that way. Was there maybe some tweaks or criticism that I might've had if I really wanted to do it? Yeah, of course there would be, but those little things, the little tweaks I might've offered, A, can't be the only thing you tell them. B, mm -hmm. Uh, the first time you, you you provide some kind of feedback like that, 
shouldn't be um, the first thing that you tell them. And if you give that kind of break, you give them the little boost up in the beginning, that allows that kind of free flow of communication that allows that trust to build that lets them know that we don't give each other enough attaboys, you know, especially in the military. Yeah. If, if they tell you nothing after a brief, that means they liked mm-hmm. everything. If they talk to you after the brief, that's because they had to run with A, B, C, D, sometimes E, right. F, your breath and your uniform, you know, like, yeah, like you really don't give positive reinforcement for a correct answer in the military. Yeah. It's assumed yeah. you're correct unless you get a tweak, right. which is not very good for the self-esteem ego. If you have, right. you know, yeah. those kind of uh, questions about yourself, they're, they're not helpful for that, but be, be timely, be relevant and be positive about the things you did like and you know, don't lie about it mm-hmm. is very valuable and a great way to build trust and move the relationship forward, move the scene forward, build on the foundation, all those right. things that make sense to you, whatever you are yeah. in the world. When there are two things that have, have really helped me as an improviser, because we're, like I said, we're a traveling band, like, you know, any other, like a music band would be. Um, and, and bands get in, they have fights, you know, they bands break up all the time, you know, and if you want your group to stay together, especially an improv group, there are some things that you really have to be okay with. One, like what you were talking about, not just being able to give critiques, but you have to be able to accept critiques um, because that makes you better. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's, that is really, really hard to be able to take critique and to take it well. Um, uh, even, even if somebody's like very delicate and does it the right way, you know, you, it takes a certain amount of humility to be like, you know what? I'm going to take what they said and I'm going to think about it, you know, well, in a quiet place. Absolutely. You, know, I'm, you, have yeah. to, you have to have that. Um, we, we switch to the, from the always having to be right or never allowing to ask a question right. in recent years to be almost kind of a scientific mindset. I have a hypothesis about the thing. Yeah. Right. And I recognize this informed hypothesis, but there might not be information that's been discovered or information that I yet have. Yeah. that with the open discussion kind of talk and I get your opinion like, yeah. Oh, that might enhance my hypothesis, redirect my hypothesis or realize that, you know, I'm barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. Uh, fun, fun side note. This would be a helpful frame of mind to discuss politics, religion, sex and money and family uh-huh. problems. Uh, yeah. Just as a little side note, but you have to have that, that thing that says when you go in, I don't have all the answers when I, when right. I set up this podcast, Yes, you'll get a plug in a second. When, when I set up my group, um, my first video is in my little group. The first video I did, the first words in my mouth was like, look, I'm doing this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I know that I want to uh, connect these two things, this business and the nonprofit world. But fun fact, I don't know how to run this kind of group. I don't know how to do a podcast. I'm not sure how this material, this content, this stuff is going to look. And letting you know up front, but I do have this experience and I do have these things and I do speak with confidence in this sweet, sultry, uh, late night FM DJ, DJ radio voice most of the time. But please know that I don't have it all figured out. I don't expect to, and I don't expect you to, if we have interactions, if there's reschedulings, if there's things that come up, it's my job as the moderator, facilitator, admin to, try to give grace because things are going to happen. I've I've had to reschedule with a couple of guests, sometimes two, three times. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes they happen in clusters. And if we can offer that grace up front Mm -hmm. and we can admit that we don't know everything and sometimes we need to be the receivers of grace as well as the givers of grace. Right. Then we get a little bit further in the conversation. And I know that Surprisingly, in this interview, I've been taking a lot of the airtime, which I don't normally do. It's fine, man. Go for it. It's your show. <laughs> yes, yeah, my show. I'll do what I want. Yeah. Well, I, and I think one of the best things, like if you want somebody to be able to take a critique well, is to model it to them and take a critique well yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can model that, um, that helps a lot. Uh, our group leader, Brian, by the way, I didn't get my plug. It's trucepodcast.com. That's T-R-U-C-E podcast. Well, you didn't um, even, even plug your <laughs> comedy troupe. Oh, you that's right. You haven't even given us the name of that yet. Well, unless you're in Jackson, Wyoming, uh, but it's the Laugh Staff, L-A-F-F, S-T-A-F-F, Laugh Staff. Um, but if, if people come in through Jackson, it's a skiing place, right? Yeah, in Wyoming. come see us. Yeah, so it's people go town, in, tours and, and how would they be able to find you if they were coming in for a weekend right. or something? How would they... Find uh, your through stuff our in, Facebook group. 
yeah, through our Facebook uh, page. Uh, it's uh, facebook.com slash the laugh staff, L-A-F-F, S-T-A-F-F. Um, or at the Center for the Arts where we perform. Uh, you could buy your tickets in advance if you like. Thank you. Um, and uh, we can also do corporate trainings if you bring your company here. We can You can contact us through Facebook. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I imagine yeah. corporations have retreat events in Jackson. They really do. Yeah, we, we have a lot of corporate events. So please, yeah, come on by. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you could take, we have a lot more games we can play with you. Uh, um, a side question real quick. Yeah. When there's there's um, travel agents that coordinate destinations and they get paid from the local hotels and conference arenas in Jackson to make yeah. those connections. So uh, do you have the travel agents info and are they plugging you as they're bringing people in? No, uh, we, we uh, have talked to a number of the hotels here. Um, ah, so when they, they're getting their packages, they can get, you know, for corporate events. In. Yeah. Uh, so we talk to concierges from time to time because the concierge holds all the power. Um, I don't think so I've we, ever <laughs> talked to a concierge when coordinating anything ever and that oh, really? probably means I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, well, they're great on vacation. If you're ever on vacation, ask a concierge for suggestions. Um, but uh, we're getting off the topic. <laughs> We've but, been uh, so off topic most of this thing, but I think oh, it's we're great. definitely providing value. Yeah. Um, I, I think the last thing I wanted to throw out there um, is that now that you you know talked about building relationships and um, and saying yes and – one of the most important things in improv is be quick to forgive yourself um, Ooh. and be quick oh, to forgive huge. others. Yeah. Ooh. Because uh, oftentimes our shows at the last half, we're, they're two hours long. Um, so if you get up in the first scene and you strike out, you know, and it's just flops, you can't carry that failure with you for the next two hours because it will destroy your whole show. And this is excellent uh, advice if you play poker, yeah. but oh yes, topic. of course, yes, you gotta yes. be able to forget that hand you just sucked at and get the next deals coming, whether you're ready for it or not. Right, and yeah. uh, and this goes like this goes for forgiving others, your coworkers, the other people in your team. It also goes for forgiving yourself. Um, you have to be able to learn from your mistakes, absolutely, but be able to forgive yourself very quickly. Um, because if you don't, you'll drag those failures with you, maybe for the rest of your life. Um, and, and that doesn't get you anywhere. Um, and so, as it can ruin an improv scene, it can ruin your corporation or your organization. Mm -hmm. um, you want people to be able to be forgiven for what they've done and show them grace. Um, that, that, if nothing else, that if you walk away with nothing else, be able to forgive other people and forgive yourself. Because otherwise, nothing will create a hostile environment faster and unforgiveness. I, I tell you what, Chris, I wasn't sure how this episode would play out, uh -huh. where we would go, that we would be getting improv comedy lessons. Uh, we covered a multitude of topics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how to speak <laughs> in a boardroom and gossiping yeah. is wrong and a right. bunch of other stuff. Uh, another plug for gossiping is just so damaging, it's whether you terrible. like it or not. But, mm -hmm. um, so amazing. We've got plugs along the way for your Truce podcast, which is fantastic. We've got the Laugh Staff. Laugh Staff, yeah. AFF on both of those Laugh Staff. Yes, in Jackson, yes. Wyoming. Uh, you even plugged a movie in there. It, yeah. If you're listening to this, if you do nothing else, see if you can wrangle Chris onto a phone call just to talk to this man. Uh, have a lot of fun. Whatever the thing is, Chris is worth your time. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I've been blessed. I think one of the other things we talked about in our pre-interview was uh, saying yes to life. Um, and oh, and yeah, this yeah. yes and thing that we talked about in improv is so important just in your life. Uh, if you could mm -hmm. say yes to, and I've been really blessed in that I've, you know, I've worked in uh, the entertainment industry. I worked on Hell's Kitchen, the Bernie Mac show. Um, I've worked in... Um, I worked for the Cleveland Indians baseball team as in the scoreboard department. Um, I've been able to drive a school bus. I've got a podcast. I wrote and directed two films. Um, so a lot of that was just, I've been, I think both of us have been to all 50 states yep, in the U S 50 states. Uh, um, and Hashtag all, lot, 50. all 50, a lot of that is, <laughs> and the district of Columbia, but yeah. uh, the, uh, a lot of that is just saying yes to life. Um, and when yeah. it, when it gives you that opportunity, it can make a huge difference. Um, uh, you don't want to miss out on something because you're so afraid to try something new. 
Uh, and yeah. you are an improviser now because you said, <laughs> yes, and I will try this. <laughs> yes, and, and we did live, well, not live, pre-recorded training, but currently nothing's in it out because let's be honest, we crushed it. But crushed I, it. I wanted to point out that, that so our pre-conversation, you said a lot of life is saying yes. And it one is. of the things that's uh, you know, kind of one of my personal mantras or, or principles is that nothing matters unless you show up. Right. And, and those are, are both hand in hand and those are both fantastic. And you, if, if you don't say yes and show up, look, the good things aren't happening. Yeah. No one is going to come to your house, knock on your door and say, hey, person I don't know or never met, I have a legitimate opportunity, not a scam, but a legitimate opportunity right. for the thing that's going to enrich and enhance your life, your perspective, your, your pocketbook, your, your wellness, your well-being, your health. Your, it's not going to happen. They're right. not coming to you. You might get an ad via, you know, Facebook stream or Hulu ad or, or whatever your thing is, but no one's coming to you in the place that you're hiding at or the wallflower or the, in your dark room or the, I don't want to talk. No one's coming to you. Right. You have to say yes to the opportunity. And then you've said yes. Then you've got to actually show up. Truth be told, two minutes before this thing, we started talking today. Yeah. I was over here after a long day of work and a busy time uh, in my, my day job, you know, yeah. over in the Middle East here, was not interested in talking to you. Not you yeah. as a person. I understand you were tired. But not interested in, in engaging. Yeah. Um, and I could have easily said, you know what, Chris, we got to reschedule because I'm being a little baby right now. Right. I, I could have easily done that. Yeah. But I think it would have, you know, would, would have been one step closer to doing less every day instead of one step closer to saying yes every day and engaging every day and right. living every day and growing every day and connecting every day and providing value every day and being awesome every day. Hashtag how yeah. I your mother. Um, <laughs> you have to say yes. You have to show up whether it's yeah, for an it's online interview or an in-person interview, whether it's right. getting up, showering, shaving, getting ready for the day or for the gals, putting the old war paint on and going out ready yeah. to kick some butt. If you don't, if you don't do that, no one's going to do it for you. No one cares more about your success, your trajectory, your life than you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that's just taking a little step and saying, yes, and, uh, you know, going to that conference you've been putting off for years uh, to learn more. Like I, I doing the podcast, I, I've gone to several conferences that have just really pushed me further. Um, they've just made my game so much better because I was willing to leave my comfort zone and go oh, yeah. say yes. Yeah. I, my intro to, uh, I used to make independent Christian films. My intro to that market, I was at a conference and I sat at the table with the people I knew I had to sit with. Even though I wasn't invited, I sat there. It was, you know, it's a free country. And uh, I, I overheard the email address of the producer. And I was like, oh, I'm writing that down. And I, I emailed him and that's how I got my first job in that market. Um, Isn't that wonderful? Those are you people that go to networking stuff and you're yeah. business card hoarders. Mm -hmm. If you don't flip over the white business card on the back, write something about uh, most ladies like the sweet outfit they were wearing or mm -hmm. their cute hairstyle or the something super interesting cool they interest said. they said yeah. or their little thing or the guys like uh, the slick shoes or the nice haircut or the sharp glasses and then something they're really kind of interested and passionate about or that little quirk like you mentioned earlier that's yeah. what the white business card is for and then when you yeah. get home you immediately unload the pocket yeah take a look at the thing build that little minute picture of the, of the person and shoot them a quick something yeah hey i know networking business cards don't ever you know, don't often pay out you know pay out dividends i just want to drop you a quick line and said that i appreciated your check your notes on the back of the card right that you had that you were very stylish and obviously prepared and willing to attack the day looking right. forward to connecting in the future travis yeah something quick something easy one or two minutes if you're going to the networking events but you're not actually networking if you're in the group and not engaging in the group if you're setting up zoom calls but you're not showing up for your zoom calls why yeah. on earth are you going to the networking event why on earth are you setting up the zoom call why on earth are you doing whatever the thing is if you're doing, if you don't, word of the year, finish? Oh, <laughs> it's a good word of the year. I felt electricity right there. I don't know about you all. Well, 
but I felt a little bit of zing there at Oof. the end. Chris, Oof. love having you on so very much. It's I look forward to any and all future conversations. Yeah. Uh, two peas in an international pod. Uh, drop me some quotes, contact, email, Facebook, whatever the gram people can reach you at real quick mm-hmm. and where you want yeah. them, your primary source of connection, where you want it to be. Right. Everything is at trucepodcast.com. That's T-R-U-C-E podcast.com. I've got Facebook. I've got uh, Instagram. I've got Twitter. And they're all at Truce Podcast. Um, you can also find The Laugh Staff, like I said, on Facebook, L-A-F-F-S-T-A-F-F. Um, if you'd like to hire us for a corporate event or a training or even just have us over to play games with your family on vacation, uh, we do that as well. Uh, it's a great way to bring your family together, especially if the extended family is there. Um, and so it's, it's just been a pleasure talking to you, Travis. Thanks for this opportunity. Hey, uh, it's been all my pleasure, uh, all on this side of the staff, all on this side of the camera. Don't worry, Michael's going to fix that for me. I got, I got one for you, Michael. <laughs> Check this out. It's going to drop hot. It's going to be on nonprofitarchitect.org. And on there has all the little stuff I'm signed up for. So if you're, if your jam is Spotify, there's a little, my little Spotify link on there. If you want to be on iTunes, it's on there. Fun fact, the nonprofit architect podcast hit number four on iTunes in 2019. It was maybe only for a day, but heck we hit it. So thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing. Can't wait to see you next time. Connect with me or Chris. We want to hear from you. If you've got feedback for us and you don't tell us, it's like you don't have feedback for us. Let's catch you next time. And we're out. We think. Nice. That was that fun. Was, that was a lot of fun. And I'm Thanks glad. Thanks for having courage. I'm glad. Well, absolutely. But I'm glad that I didn't say, hey, Chris, I'm a baby and I don't want to show up today. Because yeah. I almost did. That wasn't right. a lie. That wasn't a joke. I understand. Um, no, I, I have come down with a sickness. So I, I was considering a nap myself, but I, I think this was much more productive. Uh, I got a note for you. Yes, sir. You remarked about the wonderment of my backdrop. Uh huh. I wrote here uh, a banner, get a banner made with your Truce podcast right. logo. Mm-hmm. They've got them for like a hundred dollar bill. Right. That would look smoking to frame you out and if your right. logo was offset so you could see the full logo and like uh-huh. a bible verse or the whatever across yeah. you know, whatever you use mm-hmm. i think that would because i love the look the collared shirt i love mm-hmm. that you've got a dynamic mic with the pop filter i do. love love the frame and kind of jelly on that when i ask you about it mm-hmm. but I don't know how much video stuff you do, but the repurpose.io that you should do, and so should uh, I do, uh, um, that would make your branding look right. movie professional. Yeah. My, uh, the day this is the first, the day? This is the first video interview I've done, though. So uh, the, uh, the, um, my show, because of the, it's so heavily edited and because of the music, I don't do a lot of the video stuff. Uh, but I do use Headliner a lot um to to repurpose things so yes and (laughs) yes and you might one day have a job interview or someone's Mm -hmm. interested in having you on and they want to get to know you a little quick interview on zoom uh we're coming up in two hours which i'm cool with and i know you've got a call soon i do Um, in 12 minutes they're gonna pop this thing on and i'm not sure what the thing is behind you sheet or whatever Mm -hmm. yeah uh you yeah, I know it's not so exciting. You, yeah. well, you you increase your face value when you smile. <laughs> right. It's free uh-huh. and increases your face value. Dad uh-huh. joke. But would rock star professionalism. And I'm also writing this note down for me because while yeah. I have this here, I do not have it back in the States. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Get that banner shipped to your home address. Yeah. Uh, I think it's definitely worth both of our time to do something like that. Sure. I don't know mm-hmm. if I, I probably have a banner contact somewhere. I'll go like this. Who do I know that makes the banners? And someone will say, um, you know, um, do you use Canva? Uh, I'm familiar. And I think my legit logo was put up by Canva. Yeah. They, they, I've uh, printed my business cards and a bunch of other stuff with them. Um, oh, they, using they like templates. their services. Use their templates. Cause they print 
everything. Um, so you can, they've got templates that you can upload your graphics. It's, it's a great service and they have done a great, great job with stuff I've done before. So I use them for my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, but also to print stuff. Yeah. I have, see, I knew the design thing, but I didn't realize they had the products, which makes sense oh, yeah. they would, but I didn't really yeah. research it because I don't know. I didn't want to, I didn't finish. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Their business, they did my business cards and they are the best I've ever seen. So I love them. Um, cool thing that I thought was the networking notebook uh -huh. capture the name and the cork. Uh -huh. um, that knows for me. Quick quotes. Uh, one minute here. Uh, improv is great for a log jam. Mm -hmm. It's important to bring something to the table. I think we're talking about brick. Letting it go quick to forgive. Some amalgamation yeah. of that yes and on a shirt relationships are king because i hired you to squeal that in there and a lot of life is saying yes Dad, there's like one more that just knocked my socks off but i think nice. i might have been so shocked that i didn't write it down I'll catch i'm to listen through yeah i was gonna say i don't know i i don't have anything a whole lot else written down apparently, i was shooting from the hip <laughs> apparently for me i have to go back and listen to my quotes because i think you pointed nice. them out but yeah awesome Thanks, man. I Thanks want to me. do this again. I sure. think you and me are on the same page on a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, we, Let the, me know. All, all 50, Christianity. I'm interested in movies, film, et cetera, from when I'm, uh, when I'm out. Uh, the podcasting world, connecting the improv. Yeah. Gave me an idea. I'm not saying that I crushed it, but the Chuck E. Cheese thing pretty much nailed it. Uh, yeah. But the story, the story, my speech was here. My story, my head was running out here as I was going. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's fine. That's one of the fun things about that, uh, that exercise is it's just to start you going and eventually, you know, you can take that skill and, and make longer scenes. Um, uh, it's, it's so much fun. I, I love improv. It's, it's not only a great way to build an environment, it's a great way to burn off steam. Um, you know, at the end of a long work week to be able to do that is just great. So I, I really needed this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thanks for playing along. Uh, thumbs up. Seriously. Good. I, I, God. Didn't, I wasn't sure how it was going to fall out. Uh -huh. I needed this. Thank you. Good. Yeah, man. I, I got to run, brother. I know you do too. Sounds good. I do. I've got to call in a couple minutes, but this was great. And have a good night. Hope you sleep well. And uh, let me know when this is up so I can share it on uh, in, uh, social Absolutely. Now that I have two in the hopper, I can get one next Tuesday and you, you'll likely be the next Tuesday after that. Cool. But I'll let you know. Nice. Have a good night. See ya. See ya.